Okay, let's start with lesson one, uh, which is on large displacement analysis. Um, so now we have discussed this topic in the last uh, recording, wherein it was more on uh, the theory part of it. Let's see when we imbibe these things in a in an analysis, how the results change. Okay. So upon successful completion of these lessons, we'll be able to perform an elastic. Remember, now we are talking about geometric nonlinearity. Okay, geometric nonlinear large deformation static analysis. Define and create a nonlinear study. Copy material load, etc. This should be fine. Pseudo time curve. So remember, the time is not real, but it is a pseudo time. Edit the loading in order to follow the time curve. Define the various pseudo time stepping procedures. Uh, run nonlinear analysis with various incrementation procedures. And of course, I will see how to use large displacement. Okay, so this is the case. If you see this image down here, uh, it is a steel hose clamp. Um, it is being used for um, uh, many applications, as simple as tightening pipes, etc. So you can see it is <coughs> sorry. It is it is rotated or twisted almost 360 degrees. So it is not one or two, but entire rotation happens. Uh, and it can be of different lengths. That is 150 meter up to 150 millimeter long. Okay, it has a certain width and this thing. So first and foremost, we are doing a simple linear static analysis to see how the how the hose clamp behaves. So here it is. This is the setup for a linear uh, static analysis. Uh, by now, you should be all comfortable. So this is a sheet metal part, simple sheet metal part. As and when you create a static analysis. uh it it will be treated as surfaces or shells okay so that is what has been done here it is automatically treated appropriate material is given uh it is rather it is taken from solid or scad part of it itself hmm? now comes the most important fixed boundary condition that is at one end we are holding it firmly typically this will transfer to the line or the surface which is being meshed automatically and on the other end we are defining defining a boundary condition which is comparatively new in this chain of discussions that we are doing and this one would be more on flat faces so on this particular flat face on this particular flat face we are applying a uh, a translation um, which is along along a certain direction so now if you observe here in terms of uh, um how can i say the uh, linear translations we are setting a value of 0 in the normal plane okay whereas other two we are leaving along phase plane directions and normal to the phase we are leaving it free whereas we are not allowing it to move uh, if i see it on the uh, image here in the y direction so this will this will this is just to help the solver to avoid um, solving any unnecessary degrees of freedom and help it more for the conversion so typically as we discussed non linear analysis are very time consuming it takes a lot of time to solve uh, so it makes sense it makes sense to do such a scenario wherein uh, wherein we can actually um, restrict unwanted degrees of freedom or restrict uh, those directions which we know will behave in a certain way okay uh, along phase direction one rotation uh yes this is what it is now second one is in terms of radians we are giving a value of 6.25 which is equivalent to 360 degree am i right yeah it is 360 degree and we expect uh it to rotate um again this is along y direction so along y axis we expect it to rotate and and have a complete curve as that shown in this image down here so when when i solve this setup Uh, okay it is a simple linear static so no different things here it is simple thing let me solve this okay <coughs> you'll get this large displacement warning say no to it you're not going to change any values you can see the way it has happened for obvious reasons or for whatever the capabilities of linear static analysis it for sure could not um, uh, could not give us the deformations in the rotational di direction uh, because even though we have applied a rotational degree of freedom it applies only in a certain way as well if i check out the displacement it looks like this 
you can see the way it is going so it is basically dragging it in this uh, direction only there is no real displacement happening so obviously this is incorrect this is not what is desirable and in 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 this case the non linear analysis is going to help you so typically you are, when you create a new study you'll get this option as of now we are discussing only the static part of it so non linear static analysis i select that and i proceed with the analysis okay uh, once the setup is created in terms of properties uh, we are going to do two different kind of iterations in one iteration uh, we are giving a fixed time step of point 01 okay so every point 01 now as we discussed this is pseudo time this is not true time the displacement will be applied or the total displacement is divided into multiple steps and applied at every point 01 instant okay of course this is a large displacement formulation the displacements are huge no doubt on that and and we are selecting the direct sparse solver any other changes no that's it so this is this is the setting over here hmm? the loads and boundary conditions are same let me take a standard view so that we can see how how it is going to behave and i solve it now so now from 2015 you may be knowing uh, we can actually visualize the results when it is solving and this is a very nice case where the visualization would make more sense so you can see clearly that that it is started rotating as per the expectations of this setup see the way it goes and it closes itself does it make more sense does is it realistic and does it give a clear idea on on the difference that that one can expect so as of now we discussed more of theory so this gives an absolute application of the difference of using a non linear analysis hmm? there on let me move on to um, move on to a little bit different wherein instead of um, using the fixed time step i am using the automatic wherein the software decides the steps that one is going to take and it proceeds with the analysis so on doing that you can see here let me solve it again so almost a similar thing it might be more faster because software knows convergence happening at certain points and it can proceed with it terms of results not a big difference of course sometimes automatic can fail because the steps that it is taking could be bigger but but it it is something like this yes it appears little bit going inside but i believe that is permissible and uh, let me check how it looks here yeah it is penetrated by well here so there is indeed a some difference uh, but i would say this is more because it has jumped on certain steps and that's what i said automatic may jump on certain things and may not be that accurate okay but obviously if we are not sure how many steps to use when to increase when to reduce better to leave to the automatic and it can handle it for us finally in even the static analysis we have this option of large displacement to be activated this is present in uh, uh, linear static solver as well so you can of course play with it just check out how it looks uh, and get a feel of those results as well obviously in a linear static we don't have updation of results while it is solving even though it is a iterative thing but uh, but we don't uh, give out the results so uh, this option is present in simulation standard as well but i suggest i suggest we stick to non linear for any such non linear behavior that is the best way to get the accurate results
frankly no one would accept this right it is yeah it is it is changing a little bit compared to what you might um, see here there is considerable amount of change let me open these results definitely this is meaningless okay this is meaningless but with large displacement activated it is far far more better and more uh, more realistic but obviously we don't have control on the steps the stresses may not be absolutely accurate for which i would always suggest to go back to the non linear module so this is what we learn uh, in lesson 1 let me check the training manual if i have missed out on any other important topic and uh, and move ahead linear static analysis to properly understand the modeling situation Uh, yeah these are fine these are basic steps where we hold the restraints 6.25 automatic solver okay uh yeah there is a bit of text on solvers but uh, i would also suggest again just the way i mentioned in the previous chapter that we uh, check out this knowledge base uh, go to the knowledge base and check out for solvers there are huge number of uh, articles especially this one how to choose a solver you can take down this solution id and uh, that that tells you in more detail on the relevance of different solvers and when to use what but if you if in short if you see here typically for solutions which are more than 500000 degrees of freedom we we use ffe plus solver and uh, direct spark is uh, comparatively far more accurate can handle more complex things we do have many different options like direct sparse intel direct sparse large problem direct sparse so you can appropriately select and and do the analysis okay uh, obviously the new ones are comparatively with new technology should be faster should handle more scenarios so so you can of course uh, we do have the automatic option let the software decide what you, how how it handles a certain thing but uh, saying say, saying that we can also uh, Uh, decide which solver can be used in the analysis mm -hmm. this is fine we did the geometric and linear analysis limitation so this we already saw the limitations in the form of results and we moved on to non linear yeah the curve uh, yeah this is what i missed out i guess um um the where is it let me open the software yeah this one this particular did i miss out on anything oops sorry ha huh, here it is i i should go to the non linear analysis so the um the variation can be given in the form of a curve as well and the um, the input displacement can be uh, forced or you decide when to have more deflections when to have lesser deflections and those can be input from here okay the training training manual is giving more specifics on uh, the values if you want to play with it feel free to but uh, this is what it is so 6.25 has been applied over a period of 1 second and that gives a clear understanding of uh, um how how it can be applied of course in this case it is linear no big difference but of course you should be knowing this option and you can play with it fixed increments you saw we used two different options of fixed and variable uh, large displacement yeah mm, these these values we'll see in more detail in a some time at in this setup it is all default wherein we are using force control algorithm newton raphson method different integration methods are there we are using the default one new arc and these are the op tolerance etc so 1 to 20 conversion to it is all default we are not um, we are not uh, changing any of those those values here oh yeah we were expecting this error but in our case we didn't see it that's fine but that tells you if you face that error how to overcome it and uh, yeah pretty much that's it
Okay, these three could be um, could be important, uh, especially these options are somewhere here. Um, if you see here, uh, do, 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 let me open this. So we have these things: do equilibrium iterations every one step. That is, each step it will ensure that equilibrium is done. If equilibrium fails, then it will reset the time step to a smaller value. And how many times can it go back like this is decided by this value, which is 20. Anything more than 20, the solver will fail and say that convergence could not be achieved. Uh, the tolerance, obviously this will decide. Uh, first of all, we'll see the incremental strain. So the incremental strain allowed is around 0 0.01. Anything above this, uh, it is going to step down on the force or displacement based on the control method that has been used. If not, uh, I can use the convergence tolerance and understand uh, and understand uh, or a control how much accurate I want it. Obviously, a tighter tolerance will make it more strong <coughs> and other way around. And finally, singularity elimination factor. Um, at the moment, I will not deal deep into it, but uh, typically a value of 1 can help it help in more convergence do equilibrium steps every maximum equilibrium steps convergence tolerance we saw incremental okay singularity yeah here is a good definition of this one so uh, this is considered only when large displacement action is specified and it can be help the solution to pass through local singularities on the equilibrium so sometimes even during this solving during the iterations it might face some singularities which are not desirable and selecting this option appropriately can help uh, uh, can help in uh, ensuring the convergence is happening okay and what else or door here system increment strain the SEF value of less than one can help in non-linear solution proceed further yeah, typically one of the things which even I blindly do is in case of any failures I end up changing to one and uh, that that will help in convergence if there are any local singularities that's what is the word that is being used here okay to scale animate run your static large displacement we are checking out Okay, I think that's it in this chapter. Um, next one would be on incremental control techniques, the different control techniques available. Um, so that I'll record it in the next session. So this 20 minutes odd video should help you in uh, in getting a grasp of lesson two. Any questions? Feel free to contact me. Uh, we can we can have a chat on that topic. Okay, thank you.